Welcome to MarcusG.TV. I'm Chef Marcus Giuliano. I'm a chef on a mission. Today's mission is Yelp reviews. You know, most businesses I speak to, most other restaurateurs I speak to, hate Yelp reviews. And I gotta tell you, he, I'm not too fond of Yelp reviewers either. You see, I get tons and tons of five-star, four-star reviews on TripAdvisor. I mean, an outrageous amount. But when I, when I get that email, that alert that I'm getting a Yelp review, it's just like, oh my gosh, fingers crossed, you know, because Yelp reviewers are just like a different breed of people. It's like they're just really bitchy, complaining. Yeah, I have a four point two star rating on Yelp. I, I have a really great review on Yelp. According to Yelp, I have a fantastic review, but you know, it just feels like the review, the impact of those bad reviews on Yelp are just, just heart wrenching to me. And it, it's just terrible. And I gotta tell you people, you know, if you go to a restaurant and you have a bad experience, you speak up and say something. You say something to a manager, you tell your wait staff, and I, I've done several videos on the proper way to handle a complaint at a restaurant. You speak up, you say something. If, if you're too embarrassed to say something when you're at the restaurant, because a lot of people are too embarrassed, right? They're like, oh, I didn't want to cause any problems. I was with people. You call the manager the next day, you call the owner the next day and say, you know what? I was at your restaurant last night, two nights ago, and here's the problem that I had, okay? Here's where the issues, you know, I wanted to like your restaurant, it was recommended, whatever it is, here's what happened. But nowadays, people just go on and bash the shit out of you. They're just like ruthless and like, like they're showing off, okay? And now here's my biggest issue. Nobody knows your real name because they hide under this alias or it's, or it's Joan K or Mike L or, or you know, or George P you know, with, with no real picture of themselves. It's not like a Facebook account that has to be real and verified or something where this is the real person and I can at least contact them or at least other people can say, hey, look at this real person. But we have no idea who these people are behind these Yelp profiles, TripAdvisor as well. So here's my, one of my latest Yelp reviews. It's a two-star Yelp review. Okay, oh, back to, back to how to handle a Yelp review. So you call the manager and say, you know, this is the problem I had. If the manager says to you and listens to you and takes care of it and can help you, then that's one thing. But if the manager says F you, you know, basically, oh, well, that's just your opinion, you know, whatever, and say, I'm not doing anything for you or whatever, just screw you, then yeah, you have a right to go on and complain. But if that manager's like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry, I didn't realize that. You know, you should have said something to me. You know, I w wouldn't have charged you. I, I, would have, I would have made you another dish. I would have comped something. You know, how are you to say like, wow, that person really cares. So these Yelp reviews, these online reviews have really have no, it really doesn't show the amount of care that goes into the management, how much the management cares. And myself, my wife and I care a tremendous amount. When somebody complains, we're like, okay, you know, we'll do whatever we can to make your experience happy. But when you go online and bash us, it just it doesn't it doesn't serve the purpose. So here's my latest two-star review on Yelp. I gotta look over to another computer over here. Maybe I can pick this computer up. Okay. Alright, so it says here. Alright. This is from Tanya K from Manhattan with a picture of mountains. So we have no idea who Tanya really is. Uh, she's only written two reviews before. I so wanted to like this place, but I must echo some of the other negative reviews. Okay. So much ambition, in parentheses, reflected in the prices. But the food is mediocre at best. The steak arrived cold. Tuna was drenched in sauce. And the polenta, which was the best thing we had, was $20 for two pieces of polenta. But maybe worst was the presence of boxed wines on their list. Really? I mean really. Boxed wines. All right. So let's break this review down. Tanya. Or who was it? whoever I'm, I'm talking to on this, okay? If your dish arrives cold, you speak up and say something. We could have been packed and busy. Maybe my wait staff didn't get over there. But I got to tell you, my wait staff, our staff, quality checks 
table after table after table. We ask you, is everything okay? How is everything this evening? How is, we go through and there's a checklist that we check off that makes sure that every table's been done that. Why didn't you tell us? Why didn't you tell us your steak was cold? We would have cooked you another one. We would have reheated it. We would have flashed it under the salamander. We don't have a microwave, so we can't microwave. But we would have fixed the problem right then and there. The tuna was drenched in sauces. Our tuna happens to be our most popular dish in the restaurant. It's been there for 13 years. People love it, people rave over it, and it has its own cult following. But the neat thing about the tuna is, it's so easy to omit the sauces. I could have easily taken that back into the kitchen, replated it, and put the sauces on the side. Or given you a whole new dish with sauces on the side, so you would have been happy with what you were eating. But again, we never had the opportunity to do this because my wait staff doesn't recall these complaint, complaints at all. So we, we take all of our positive or negative feedback and go back to our staff and say, here's what happened. And they'll be like, they, nobody recalls this table within this last week of having these complaints whatsoever. But yet every table was asked, is everything okay? Can I get you anything else? What else would you like? Is the food cooked okay? And people just don't speak up because are they cowards? Were they Then they go online and just bash the hell out of you? So the polenta, which was the best thing of all, and she's complaining about the price here. So I have a feeling that these people are price conscious. Let me tell you something, my restaurant's not the cheapest, but it's not the most expensive whatsoever. If you go to my website, aromatimebistro.com, I have a link, is Aromatime expensive? I have a tab, is Aromatime expensive? I have a 45 minute video on there explaining where we buy all of our food, how I source my food, how we pay exponentially more than most restaurants out there, than almost 98, 99% of restaurants out there. I pay more for my salt, I pay more for my sugar, I pay more for my flour. Even the other farm to table restaurants, even the ones that are expensive and more expensive than me, I'm paying more for my ingredients because we work relationships with who we buy from. Even my hand soap at my restaurant, we know the owners of the hand soap company, the people who make our soap. We know the owners, we have a relationship with them. I'm not buying just big brand soap, whether it's biodegradable or not. No, I know where it comes from. And that knowing that where it comes from, being able to put a face to a business is more important than saving five bucks a gallon, 10 bucks a gallon. That's much more important is that relationship with an individual company, an individual business owners versus a big, huge, massive company. The polenta comes from a small local micro distillery. It's super expensive polenta. But of course, if I were to charge what I needed to charge for the polenta, it would be much more than that. And I gotta tell you, 20 bucks for what we put on there, the roasted tomatoes, the fava beans. Well, fava beans are not cheap. Roasted tomatoes are not cheap to make, do, buy, to, to put on the plate. The dish is a fantastic plate. Then we make a sun-dried roasted, sun-dried tomato vinaigrette for it that's not cheap. I mean, everything that goes into this dish is just not cheap. So yeah, $20 might be a great margin for us, but when you look at the tuna and you look at the other dishes, everything averages out. The steak dish that they pay $25 for, and you put the polenta with it, and you average those two out, that's a home run for that price. For what you're getting in my restaurant, it's a home run. And then the last comment, boxed wines. <laughs> the presence of boxed wines on their list, I mean really. We have 250 wines on our list. Not many restaurants in the Hudson Valley can boast a wine list that has 250 wines. There are some that do, but there's not many. To boast 250 wines on our wine list costs me an inventory of about $40,000. $40,000 is what I sit on every single month, month after month on wine inventory, because I age wines. And you have to have a lot of wines to stock that many wine. You have to have a lot of inventory to stock that much wine on your list. Out of 250 wines, out of $40,000 inventory, I have four wines in a box. Two whites, two reds. And I gotta tell you, they're damn good. They're freaking good wines. There's nothing wrong with these wineries. In fact, the one winery, my wife and I have personally visited twice in Italy, in Umbria. We've been to the vineyard twice to see what they're doing to put our seal of approval on it. Plus, we have other wines for them that go to go to 40, 50, 60, and $80 a bottle because it's a fantastic vineyard. And the other vineyard from Washington State, I actually know the owner. I know the owner personally of the vineyard. And they do fantastic wine. They have a whole organic, biodynamic, sulfite-free line that's outrageous, um, all estate grown. It's awesome, awesome stuff. 
But nowadays, with the movement being green, how can you package things more green? Boxed wines are a fantastic score for the environment. An outrageous score for the environment, because you're not shipping glass across the country, okay, across the, across the globe. Wherever you're shipping to, it, it's not that heavy glass. It's so much more cost effective to ship this, to ship a plastic, plastic inside of a box than all those bottles. And the wines that we serve, the four wines from the two wineries, are fantastic wines. I drink them myself. A lot of wine snobs that come in love our Cabernet. They love our they love our Sangiovese. They love our Chardonnay. Okay, and they're from independent small wineries that are doing the right thing. So to judge my wine list and my restaurant based upon four selections out of 250, and if you look on my list, I have an asterisk next to probably 50 to 60, maybe even 70% of the wines on my list because that means I've personally met the owners of the winery, the winemaker, or I've been at the winery to see what they're doing because I'm interested in building relationships and educating myself. So I visit these wineries. I go to wine tastings in New York City when these when the owners are in town, the winemakers are in town, and I visit with them, I chat with them, I build a relationship with them, okay? I go far above our green certifications. We're a green certified restaurant since from the Green Restaurant Association. Great people, by the way. I'm not bashing them by any means, but I go above and beyond what their requirements are for me to serve my food, my spirits, and everything else in my restaurant, my wine. Right down to the paper goods, right down to the soap that, that you get when you go wash your hands. Okay? So to judge me for f two box wines that you can see on the on on the bar is totally ridiculous when you have no idea anything about wine it sounds like you probably have no clue about wine but again i sent these people a response a polite response on on uh on on, on facebook on on yelp of course most most people that i respond to because i try to respond to everybody it might take me two three weeks to respond to somebody but i do try i do respond most of these people, and I usually respond right away, by the way, because I don't wait on every review, good or bad. Most of these people never, ever give me the courtesy to respond back to me. Never. They never give me the courtesy of telling me up front. I've never had one single review written that has said something to me, actually one or two, where they've said something to me and they've gone, and I fixed it, I haven't charged them. I've, I've had something where people have complained about this, complained about that, you know what I say, it's not worth it. The $80 bill, I'll wipe it clean, you owe me nothing, you know, please take my sincerest apologies, I don't owe you. And two or three times people have still gone and bashed the hell out of me. But most times, when I comp something, when I fix it right then and there, they don't go online and complain. Because how can you complain? I listen to you, I put myself in your shoes. I didn't charge you. And I mean, uh, most restaurants charge people when they complain still. So many restaurants, I hear that time and time and time again from my staff, from myself, and from other people that say, oh, I complain and they still charge me. If you complain at my place, you don't get charged. First, I fix the food. If I can't fix the food, then I don't charge you. Because if you say, oh, my steak is cold, I'm gonna reheat it, I'm gonna recook it, I'm gonna remake it so I can get you a steak that you like. But after the second or third time of you not liking the steak, my, I throw my hands up and say, you know what, I'm sorry. There's nothing I can do. I'm not going to charge you. Eat what you want. I had a couple in here the other night that ate three, had me cook three different salmons for them. And they're sure they ate like half of the first one, half of the second one, and like none of the next one. I didn't charge them for it. I didn't charge them at all for it. I didn't even charge the guy for the, for the steak that he ate. And he ate it because they complained on the salmon was bad. So... Uh, I ch it's not worth it for me to to fool around with review with people like that and go and write nasty reviews like that. So I just comp it. It's, that's not that's not the proper that's the proper way for me to handle my business and handle business. But when you don't give me the chance, how can you say you know? So I make a response. I make remarks. I send these people a private message all the time saying, "Here's my phone number. Please call me. I would l value your feedback. This means a lot to me. This is how we grow. This is how we improve." And this is how I do business. I care. And most of these people never, ever, ever respond back to me. I think maybe 10%, if that, actually respond back to me and say, oh, no, thanks for writing back or this or that. And maybe 4 or 5% actually will phone me and say, well, I really wanted to tell you, you know, how bad our experience was or, or this or that or, you know, just take the courtesy to call back. If you take the time to write the review, Take the time to listen to my response and take the time to at least talk to me about my response. That's it, you know? 
sort of a rant. Um, people tell me all the time that I should tell stories. Because the stories that we have at the restaurant of people's illogical thinking are just amazing. And people just don't believe it when I actually tell them the stories. Like, you have to document that. You have to make a video. you got you got to do something with that. Because nobody would actually believe these stories that you're telling us. And we have tons of these stories. So, if this video is well liked, then maybe I will tell some more of those stories or maybe read some more reviews and my responses to these reviews. Because really, I'm not in business to piss people off. I'm in business to provide a good product, to make people happy, and I'm in business to make money myself. So that's the bottom line. So tell me what you think about a video of this format. I'm Chef Marcus Giuliano. If you like my videos, please hit like, subscribe to my channel, and definitely pass it on.